Well, the next point that I'm taking in this video lecture is why should we earth one plate of the capacitor? Now, this question when I ask in the class while I'm teaching the chapter of capacitance, then most of the students, they would give me the answer, well, if you earth one of the plates, then uh, the capacitance increases. I say, how? The capacitance, if you take the case of a parallel plate capacitor, C is equal to epsilon naught A by D. If you take a spherical capacitor, then it is uh, uh, 4 pi epsilon naught R1 R2 upon R2 minus R1. What is the other thing to do in that? Okay, let me show you. So what happens if you earth one of the plates? Now you will understand when I go through this concept with you. All right. Suppose I have this plate X. I have this plate Y. X, Y. Okay. I give it charge Q. I give it charge minus Q, free charge. Then you know the, about the distribution for the conductors to be in equilibrium. Zero charge here. Zero charge here. All Q here. Minus Q here. Sigma here minus sigma here. Now, if I ask you, what is the PD between them? Okay, the PD is V, distance is D, area of the face area is A. What is the energy that is in the control volume? Now, control volume, I write it like this, CV, that is control volume and the control volume is A into D. Now, for a parallel plate capacitor, it is A into D. Similarly, I can think about the spherical capacitor, I can think about the cylindrical capacitor. But right now, I am take, taking on the concept learning, so I will stick on to the parallel plate capacitor, so that you first grasp the concept, then the same you can go further on the spherical and cylindrical capacitor, or for that matter, any capacitor. This is a higher potential plate, this is a lower potential plate, this is the control volume. Now, well, mind you one thing, the capacitor is interested in the energy, electric potential, electrostatic potential energy that is stored within its control volume. Within the control volume, there is an electric field from here to here and this is E arrow and E arrow, of course, you know very well, that will be sigma upon epsilon naught I cap, contribution of this and contribution of both the plates give me electric field. Now, if I ask you the energy density, small u, that is energy per unit volume, or, or okay, first I ask you, what is the energy? Now, everybody knows the expression, the energy in the control volume, in the control volume, in the control volume, control volume, this is the control volume. So, energy stored in the control volume, that will be, okay, Q square by 2C, Q square by 2C. No problem. Okay, if the PD between them is V, then you can also take this as half C into V square, where V is Vx minus Vy, the PD. Okay, fine. Now, I change the scene. The capacitance C is, of course, epsilon naught A by D. Permittivity I am taking epsilon naught, free space or air. Now what I do, so this is the case 1, in the case 2, what I do, I, same plates, everything same, I give it Q, free charge and I keep it neutral, so charge here is 0. Now what will happen? The conductors to be in electrostatic equilibrium, the charges will be redistributed on the plates of the capacitor such that the electric field within the conducting material is 0. We have learned that so much. So, sum divided by 2. So, Q by 2 here, Q by 2 here. Now, this total is Q, it, both are floating plates. So, Q by 2 here and minus Q by 2 here because of Gauss's law and otherwise also according to charge conservation. Look at that. Q by 2, Q by 2 gives you Q minus Q by 2, Q by 2 gives you 0. Fine. So, sigma here, minus sigma here. And in this case, sigma, of course, is not Q by A, but it is Q by 2 divided by A. That is Q by 2A. Now, I ask you a question. What is the energy? What is the energy here in the control volume? So, the energy in the control volume will be Q by 2 square 
q by 2 square upon 2c and that becomes uh, q square by 8c. Now capacitance is same epsilon not a by d. So you see the difference? If you one plate is charged and other is kept neutral and the other is kept neutral then the energy in the, the capacitor becomes poor. The energy stored in its control volume. Look at this. This is Q square by 2C. Energy Q square by 2C. And now it is Q square by 8C. Two less. It's a poor capacity. It becomes a poor capacitor. Now I do one thing. In this I earth. Because I was going to teach you about earthing. So this plate I earth. Let's see what happens now. So what I do is I had a switch K and this is earth. So right now what happened is when K was open, now K close. When you K close then Vy becomes zero. It is an earth plate. And if it is an earth plate, again, in my lecture ES1, I have taught you charge distribution. So what will happen? The charge here will become zero. Charge here will become zero. This is a floating plate. The whole charge Q will come here and this will be minus Q. And Q goes down to earth. I have explained to you uh, uh, that also in the three plates problem. So when I close this, then charge here is zero, charge here is zero. This is Q minus Q. The two plates are in electrostatic equilibrium and the energy becomes, look at that, Q square by 2C. C is same. So you get the same answer as before. So by this is the meaning, this is the advantage of earthing. You get the entire field confined within the control volume, point number one. There is no scattered field like E dash, E dash, and it gets the energy within the same control volume, within the same capacitor, the capacitor becomes richer. So this is uh, the main advantage why we earth and plate. Now I show you another interesting thing. This time, I, what I do is the same capacitor, the same capacitor, I, okay, the same capacitor, same capacitor x, y, I give it q1, q1, I give it free charge q2, charge distribution q dash here, q dash here, <coughs> sigma dash, sigma dash, q here minus q, of course, q dash is sum divided by 2, q1 plus q2 by 2 and q is difference divided by 2. q1 is more than q2. So this is a higher potential plate. This is a lower potential plate. Once again, the field here is E arrow. E arrow. Here is E dash scattered. It is not in the control volume. And here also E dash. Now, this field is useless from here up to infinity. From here up to infinity. Every, wherever there is electric field, energy is stored. Fine. It is in this field also there will be, in, in this field from here up to infinity, there is field, there will be energy stored, but it is useless for the capacitor. The capacitor is only interested in the energy that is in the control volume and in the control volume, the field is E and the U will be Q square by 2C and here Q is Q1 minus Q2 by 2. Now we have done this about the charge distribution. So keep this in mind. So Q square by 2C, where Q is Q1 minus Q2 by 2. Now what I do? Same thing. I earth it. I close the switch. I close this switch. So K close. Now the moment I close K, then what happens? Outside faces will have zero charge. So this becomes zero. This also becomes zero. Now this is a floating plate. So this whole charge will be Q1 here and by Gauss's law, this will have minus Q1. 
So what are the charges now? Zero on this phase, Q1 here, minus Q1 here and zero here. I hope you understand. So this scattered field gone, this scattered field gone, gone because from uh, there is no charge here and up to infinity. So nothing and the entire charge Q1 will now come over here minus Q1 here. So sigma 1 here on sigma 1 here and minus sigma 1 here. So when K is close, so this E when K is close then E between plates between plates now that is in control volume in control volume huh, that will be due to sigma 1 and minus sigma 1 in this direction both will add on so sigma 1 by epsilon naught i cap now look at that the field becomes stronger and if the field becomes stronger there will be more energy stored check it out what is energy stored now so energy stored in the control volume that is in this region a into d control volume is a into d well that would be q square q1 square by 2c c same so previously it was q1 minus q was q1 minus q2 the charge on this but now the charge on this is q1 certainly q1 is much more than q1 minus q2 by 2 so now you understand that if you make q1 very large and q2 very small technically and you earth this then you are making the pd between them strong distance is d so potential gradient is strong potential gradient is electric field electric field is strong stronger the electric field higher the stored up energy because after all we know the small the energy density u is half epsilon naught e square this is the energy density of the electric field and capital U that is stored up here will be small u times the control volume and when you do that you will get the answer q1 square by 2c. Well now you understand why we earth one of the plates of a capacitor it does not increase the capacitance but it makes the capacitor richer within its control volume it has now higher energy which is stored so now to conclude this particular idea let me tell you one thing never say capacitor stores charge capacitor doesn't store charge you can check it out it's q1 minus q1 net charge on the capacitor capacitor is a system of two plates so on the system that charge is so don't ever say that the capacitor stores charge so what does capacitor store what does capacitor store the capacitor stores electrostatic potential energy due to the potential difference between the plates within its control volume this is how perfect concept that you learn if you love the video and want me to make more useful videos for you subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated